Hi, welcome once again to Gammon Brexit News. And it turns out today that Brexit really is a big stinking pile of shit. <laughs> Why do we say this? Well, already the fishing industry has been thrown under the bus because we're now a third country. We can't export a lot of our fish, bivalves, mollusks or crustaceans into Europe because essentially we're a third country and our water is dirty. All these fish products, seafood, need to go through a veterinary check before they're allowed into the European Union and because of water's dirty they won't accept them. Now it gets worse because as I've mentioned before in previous videos we have a supply chain issue in this country. There are no drivers to drive trucks around, things are not coming in and out of the country and it's just getting worse and this is gonna stink. We've actually got a shortage now in the UK of a product called ferric sulfate, which is an acidic solution which is used to suppress or prevent the growth of algae in sewage treatment plants. So some of these chemicals used in the sewage treatment process are now in short supply, driven by driver shortage, supply chain issues, caused by Brexit. So the government now, DEFRA, or the Environment Agency, has told companies that they can bypass this final, well maybe final, I don't know, but third stage in the treatment process if they don't have the right chemicals. So what can they do? Well, they're not going to prevent the growth of algae, they're just going to pump more shit, literally, into the rivers and waterways of this country. All this effluent, also known as shit, will gather around the coast where the bivalves, the mollusks, the crustaceans and some of these fish naturally live. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg said that our Brexit fish were happy fish. I don't think they are because they're going to be swimming in effluent and shit. That doesn't make for a happy fish, does it? Who's going to want to eat that? So, these companies, obviously, you know, effluent and waste is highly controlled. But the, the, the government have said to businesses that if they don't have these correct chemicals, well, their waste permits, it doesn't really matter. They can just pump all this crap into the waterways and it will congregate around the sea anyway. The government says that water supply consumers will not be affected by this. Realistically, they will. I mean, I already, I don't drink the water in this country. The tap water is disgusting. It's just a horrible blend of hard water, lime scale, and chemicals to try and keep it fresh. Like, you know, like chlorine. It's like drinking a bloody swimming pool. So once again, they're taking us as idiots because now there's no ferric sulfate. So all this effluent is going to be pumped into our waterways and guess where we get our drinking water from? So it's not just the fish that are going to be eating shit, we're going to be drinking it. Or, as I mentioned in the last video, prices of things here are going through the roof. So if the water companies now have to pay more money to either dispose of effluent water or to process contaminated water which has been disposed of without proper treatment then obviously the prices are going to go up. Once again Brexit's proving to be a complete load of shit. Welcome to Brexit Britain. There's no obviously to transport these chemicals you need to have a hazardous substances transportation license. So to compound the misery from the post-Brexit HGV driver basically crunch where there are none of them, how many HGV drivers that are left in this country are actually licensed to transport hazardous substances? Probably not very many. Also, supermarkets are now paying far more money to HGV drivers so if you're a driver you're gonna go and work for the supermarket and do something like that you don't need 
you know, specific qualifications to handle dangerous substances. There's less red tape. Life's a lot easier. So who's going to transport the chemicals that keep the shit out of our water system? Well, probably nobody. Um, the government is saying that sensitive and high-risk water courses will not be affected. And it's a short-term measure. Even if it's short-term for one day, two days, you're still going to be drinking shit. Unless the water's processed pop properly. And the Confederation of British Industry has a guy who's really quite appropriately named for this. His name is Tony Danker. <laughs> Obviously something's dank, it's kind of waterlogged and blah blah blah. But he's saying that we've got an acute skills shortage in this country. And this will not be resolved until 2023. So, you've got another 18 months of drinking shit and not being able to export food because it's living in a polluted environment. So, it's another stake through the heart of the fishing industry that obviously complete hypocrites and liars like Nigel Farage flocked to to tell us we could take back control, take back control of this country take back control of this country and everything tastes and smells like shit. Much like Brexit, if it tastes of shit and it smells of shit, then it is just shit. So that's another interesting piece of news that came out today. <coughs> Excuse me. Another problem exacerbated by the lack of drivers in this country and possibly qualified dangerous chemical haulage drivers moving over to retail or something because it's more lucrative and as I've already mentioned because the supermarkets and the supply chain are paying more money to these drivers the prices of our food is going to go up but also the price of food's going to go up your national insurance is going to go up the price of electricity gas petrol diesel is going up your universal credit might be getting cut along with your pay with national insurance so with a massive increase in the price of everything and a decrease in people's wages and sectors of the economy that just simply cannot function it's a disaster if sectors of the economy cannot function they cannot generate revenue these businesses go to the wall and what do businesses do Business supply the lifeblood of the economy. They pay taxes. They employ, well, most do. They employ people. There's income tax, there's national insurance. This money gets flooded back into the government's coffers. Because you have to remember, a government does not have money. The only money that a government has is what it can raise from the workers in the economy. The distribution, the trading, the purchase and sale of goods, products and services and if this sort of purchasing power is being diminished it hurts businesses business can no longer employ people they don't pay tax anymore and that further shrinks the economy it's not difficult why does Rishi Sunak not know this surely his team of advisors and economic geniuses must have worked out that by shrinking the economy there's less revenue for the exchequer and if the exchequer has less revenue then it can pay for less ah but oh no let's just increase national insurance and take away money from people on universal credit that's one way of the government retaining money whilst throwing basically lots of industry lots of people under the bus also at the moment I work in education and a lot of this money was from the European Social Fund. The Brexit promise was that the, they would equal pound for pound, penny for penny, the European Social Fund money that went to you know devolved nations like Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. Well, Wales normally got about six million pound a year from the European Social Fund. Now the UK government is looking at giving 220 million pounds a year not billion million and that's going to be shared between Wales Scotland and Northern Ireland so our development funds are being slashed as well and if we can't invest in development and in education how do we expect to grow the economy in the future so the economy is already contracting massively this shitstorm is going to put what you know 
fishermen that are surviving, it's just going to throw them under the bus. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because there's nobody to drive the bloody bus anyway, because they're all driving for Tesco now. Anyway, those are my thoughts on some more completely depressing, disjointed news from Plague Island, Brexit, Britain. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll always try to answer them, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.